I should not have played Fallout and Fallout 2 back to back. Have you ever heard the saying, too much of a good thing makes it bad? Well that pretty much sums up my playthroughs of these games. I recently went back to play them over the last month, I've spent about 20 hours in each of them. I really wanted to see where the inspiration from Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4 came from, so I went back to the first and second, and um, I really left my playthroughs of these games kind of feeling burnt out, frustrated, and I wanted to smash my head against the wall because I was so agitated by all the little things that made these games so bad in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, these games are classics and they should be remembered, but I think we hold them on too high of a pedestal these days, especially Fallout 2. Fallout 1 was very good for what it tried to do, it was very flawed as well, but Fallout 2, holy shit, I have a lot to say about that game in this video. I went into it with an open mind, and by the end of my playthrough, I just was not feeling it at all. There were so many complaints I had, and we'll get to it. But just remember, I, I do love the Fallout series. I did like Fallout 1 a lot, but this game was just, it felt like work getting through it. The amount of effort to having to put in just to beat the game, and how cryptic the game was. Oh my god, you'll, you'll see. Just watch the video, form your own opinions, let me know what you think of the game. My name is Lord, we're gonna get into this Fallout 2 retrospective. If you're liking this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and subscribe to the channel if you want more Fallout content. But without further ado, let's get right into the story, guys. the devastation. Some had been fortunate enough to reach safety, taking shelter in great underground vaults. When the great darkness passed, these vaults opened, and their inhabitants emerged to begin their lives again. One of the northern tribes claims they are descended from one such vault. They hold that their founder and ancestor, one known as the Vault Dweller, once saved the world from a great evil. According to their legend, this evil arose in the far south. It corrupted all it touched, twisting men inside, turning them into beasts. Only through the bravery of this vault dweller was the evil destroyed. But in so doing, he lost many of his friends and suffered greatly, sacrificing much of himself to save the world. When at last he returned to the home he had fought so hard to protect, he was cast out, exiled. In confronting that which they feared, he had become something else in their eyes, and no longer their champion. Forsaken by his people, he strode into the wasteland. He traveled far to the north, until he came to the great canyons. There he founded a small village, Arroyo, where he lived out the rest of his years. And so, for a generation since its founding, Arroyo has lived in peace its canyons sheltering it from the outside world. It is home. Your home. But the scars left by the war have not yet healed, and the Earth has not forgotten. Before we get into the story of Fallout 2, let's do a recap of the events of the first game. In Fallout 1, you play as a vault dweller belonging to Vault 13. The Overseer sends you out to find a replacement water chip because the one inside the vault has malfunctioned and everyone is going to starve in 150 days if you can't find a replacement. 
You spend the game wandering through the wasteland, discovering new locations, finding new characters, completing quests, and killing everybody who points their gun at you. The game was notorious for its dark humor, its cryptic nature, and the pop culture references you can find in the random encounters while exploring the wasteland. Fallout 1 was packed with content and it could take you dozens of hours to complete every quest in the game. It also had a unique character creator and experience system. Basically every time your character leveled up, you were able to increase some of your stats, your skills, and even pick perks that allow you to change aspects of your character build. Leveling up your character never felt more rewarding. There was always a new skill to increase, a new perk to acquire, or a new milestone to reach. Seriously, I loved this game. It was filled with so much shit. Weapons, enemies, Deathclaw, raiders, slavers. It was incredible. I spent so much time playing this game, I feel like I was addicted. I was playing it while I was supposed to be at work. But don't get me wrong, the game is far from perfect, and it had a whole lot of flaws that frustrated me during my playthrough. The turn-based combat was a slog to get through, even if you turn the combat speed all the way up to fast. Basically, every character has action points that they can use every turn. So what will happen is, one character will take 5 seconds to move, they'll take 5 seconds to draw their weapon, another 3 seconds to hit you, and then another 3 seconds to move back, then the next person's turn, and then they rinse and repeat, they do the same shit as the last person, and then the next person goes, and then you finally get to go, but you're doing the same thing, and it's over and over and over again. You end up spending at least 10 minutes on one battle with 3 other people, just because you have to wait for everybody to use their turn. I really hated the combat system in this game. I wish it was faster. I wish you could skip turns or do four times speed something to make it even more bearable than it is. The darkness of the afterlife is all that awaits you now. May you find more peace in that world than you found in this one. Also, most of the side quests in this game are really fucking cryptic. They don't tell you where to go, who to talk to, what item to get, what location to go to, to finish the quest. You just kind of have to guess or you have to talk to every NPC in every location to kind of put the clues together. It's really kind of bullshit if I'm being honest. And what makes it worse is that some quests can only be completed with certain skill checks. If you are too low of a lock picker, or if you don't have too high barter or speech skill, or if you're too unlucky, you can't finish some quests, and some quests will just fail automatically if you fail one skill check. It's it's really bullshit. I don't like it, and I'm kind of glad Bethesda changed this with the later games in the series. All in all, I did like Fallout 1, despite its flaws, and I really do think every Fallout fan should play it at least once. But anyways, Fallout 1 ends with the Vault Dweller defeating the Master, who is basically a supercomputer in charge of an army of super mutants. And then he returns to Vault 13 with the water chip, but is banished from the entire vault by the Overseer because he sees you out in the wastelands for too much and he thinks that you're going to be a bad influence on the vault. So the Vault Dweller wanders through the wastelands until he eventually settles in the mountains and he creates his old tribal village called Arroyo. For a hundred years, his tribe grows and flourishes, and then we get to Fallout 2. Come in, Chosen One. There are things you must know. The village is dying. The signs are everywhere. Withering crops. Dying Brahmin. Sick children. There is hope, however, a slim hope that few know of. The old discs speak of an item called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It is said it can bring life to the wasteland. This will be your quest. If you prove yourself worthy, for that proof, you must first journey to the Temple of Trials. If you survive, come back to me. We will talk more. Our life is in your hands, Chosen One. Prove yourself. Find the Gek. Be our salvation. Now, if I'm being honest, Fallout 2's story is almost an exact copy of the first game. I mean, holy shit, it's like Interplay Productions hit copy and paste of the whole script for the first game and just plopped it right into Fallout 2. It's kind of ridiculous. 
basically, when the story begins, it's pretty clear that Arroyo is pretty fucked. Children are dying, the Brahmin are getting sick, plants won't grow, and the end is near. The village elder, an old lady named Tandy, who was actually a young girl in Fallout 1, calls one of the tribals in and basically gives them a special quest. It's your job to go find a Garden of Eden creation kit, also known as a Gek, which is a special device that all the vaults had that can basically be used to rebuild any civilization from the ground up. After completing a trial to become the champion of the tribe, you retrieve the sacred Vault 13 outfit, which was worn by the Vault Dweller 100 years ago, and set out into the wasteland to find the Gek. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be honest, the story for Fallout 2 is really fucking bare bones. And I mean, I get it, I understand. Fallout 2 came out only a year after Fallout 1, so Interplayed Productions, they had to use so much content from the first game, they didn't have a lot of time to really invest in a true sequel. I understand that, but this story is super simplistic, so don't go into it thinking you're gonna get like Game of Thrones level complexity here. One of my biggest complaints about the story in Fallout 2 actually deals with the Vault Dweller in Vault 13. We're told several times by the Village Elder that no one remembers where Vault 13 is located. How the fuck is that possible? Even in Fallout 1, we could send water caravans out to the Vault to help supply the citizens. So people know where Vault 13 was, and that was only 100 years ago. How the fuck did people not remember where this Vault was in a century? I mean, I know it sounds like a long time, but word spreads fast in the wasteland, and you can meet several people in Fallout 2 that know where Vault 13 is. They even know where Vault 15 is and all these other vaults in the city. So how the fuck does the village elder who is connected to the Vault 13 dweller not know where the goddamn vault is? It's just, it's moronic. It's fucking stupid. But whatever, you know, we don't really come to Fallout for the main story quest. We come for the gameplay mechanics and the interesting side quests. So how are those looking in this game? Well, they're not really much better. Let me explain. First off, everything that annoyed me in Fallout 1 is still here, except it's a hundred times worse. Quests are still cryptic as fuck. NPCs never tell you where you need to go next or what item you need to pass this door. And combat is still slow as fuck. Good luck going to Necropolis, starting combat, and leaving that fight within less than 20 minutes. Good fucking luck. When there are 10 feral ghouls on the screen, and they each take 20 seconds to move 3 steps, you're going to be waiting 15, 20, 30 minutes just to finish combat before you can leave the fucking map. You might as well restart the whole game at that point, and just never start a fight. There's a settlement called Broken Hills which is filled with some caravan workers and they hire you to help protect their caravan from raiders. So when you accept the job, you go into a random encounter where a bunch of raiders are attacking the caravan. You do your, you do your thing, man. You shoot everybody, you kill everybody. Everything is good to go. And nobody tells you anything. You're just standing there in the middle of nowhere. So the caravan isn't moving. So you just kind of leave the screen yourself to try to go to Reno where you're supposed to go. So when you get to Reno, no one's there. So you return to Broken Hills, and when you go talk to the caravan worker, he's pissed at you, and he says he won't pay you because you left the caravan, you deserted it. Well, what the fuck was I supposed to do, sir? No one was moving, all the raiders were dead. What the fuck am I supposed to do, sit here with my thumb up my ass? Now I can never do another caravan job because of this one fucking thing. This is another game-breaking bug that pre prevents you from doing any more caravan jobs at all the whole side quest is just locked off so you need to reload your save and i still don't know how to do this even to this day i don't know how to do the caravan thing without getting the caravan guard pissed at me about this it's so bullshit bro it's such bullshit i hated it the random encounters are lazy and repetitive as fuck they each reuse one of 10 maps and that's not to mention these maps are taken right from fallout 1 these are the exact same maps they just took them, copy and pasted it right into Fallout 2 and just filled them with each with different enemies that'll spawn every now and then. That's it. Those are the random encounters. No unique locations to go to. No unique situations or enemies or, in, or NPCs you can find. It's just, you are attacked by bandits. You are attacked by slavers. Oh, here are some rat scorpions. Here are some Deathclaw in the same map you've seen 50 other goddamn times in two games. 
It's just really lazy shit. Like, Interplay, if you needed more than one year to develop this game to make new original content, why didn't you just delay the game? Why did you just copy and paste everything from the first game and put it into this one? I don't understand the logic and it really hurts this game. The darkness of the afterlife is all that awaits you now. May you find more peace in that world than you found in this one. Another issue I had with this game is its difficulty. I mean, holy hell, why is this game so hard? They only did it to pad out the runtime. You spend the first 10 hours of the game with one pistol and your spear and some healing potions. That's it. And it's so hard to buy new weapons and new armor because you only get like three gold pieces every hour of gameplay. You get like 500 if you complete one quest that could take you three hours to do. Everything is so expensive and enemies hit you like fucking trucks. You can die in random encounters almost instantly once the battles start. It's such bullshit. Even with companions, even if you and Cassidy are fighting raiders, you can get torn to shreds and watch Cassidy get his head blown off within three turns of combat starting because it's so hard. Like, why did they make it so hard? I'm not even playing on hard. I'm playing on fucking normal. I should not be feeling like I'm playing Dark Souls while I'm playing Fallout. What the fuck? Another issue I had with the game is that exploring the wasteland just wasn't very fun. Discovering locations was supposed to be exciting. But at the end of the day, it really makes you feel kind of like garbage. And that's because every NPC you talk to is a racist piece of shit. No matter who you talk to, they always look at you and they go, Ugh, look at that tribal. Oh my god, we don't want your kind here. Ew, you're fucking disgusting. The entire playthrough, people will just shit on you because you're a tribal. Like, holy shit. What the fuck even is this game? Like, I get it, it's a post-apocalyptic world, people are cruel and oppressive, but guys, you can tone it down just a little bit. The amount of racism towards tribals and feral ghouls is ungodly. Even one of the main story quest companions that you need to talk to, her name is the fucking first citizen of Vault City, she is the most racist, garbage piece of shit I've ever seen in any video game up to date. Ever. I think ever. I will never find another character as racist as her. It's insane. When it comes to the companions you can recruit in the game, most of them are okay, but some of them are pretty terrible. I really like Marcus, who is a super mutant that you can recruit, and he comes with a minigun, and he's super cool. He's also in New Vegas, which is insane to me, but he was one of my favorite companions to have, him and Cassidy. Cassidy is pretty funny because you, you find him in a bar, and you're just like, hey, do you want to come travel with me? And he's like, fuck it, yeah, I'll leave this whole fucking city and my bar that I've spent years building and creating. But yeah, I'll just leave everything, just come with you, just this random stranger I met two seconds ago. Let's go. Like, what the fuck? But whatever, he comes with a shotgun and booze. Why am I, why am I questioning his, his judgment here? There's another character you can meet called Harold, and he's a feral ghoul with a tree growing out of his head. He's medically insane, and you can also meet him in Fallout 3, which is pretty cool. Um, he basically runs this whole city filled with feral ghouls, and they run this power plant, which is really important for the main quest. Uh, the racist bitch in Vault City wants you to kill all the feral ghouls there, but you can decide to fix their power plant, and you can repair it, and then everyone will be happy except her, because fuck her. She hates all people who aren't pure humans. She's so fucking racist, dude. Why do I, why do I have to care about her? But whatever. She's important to the main quest. Anyways... Harold's pretty cool. You can build, you can fix the power plant or you can destroy it. And it's one of the bigger choices you make in the game. That's one of the cooler quests that you can do. But besides that, the main quest is really just kind of bland. And um, there's not really any other point to come back and visit Harold. So you just kind of move on, you know. Most of the locations you visit in the game are really uninspired and stale. Except for a few locations. Some of them are really cool. Like New Reno is always a blast to explore. I love it so much. It looks just like New Vegas with all the flashing lights and the mobsters and uh, the dudes with Tommy guns and in tuxedos. It was great. This is a great experience just exploring that whole city. Uh, Vault City was pretty cool as well. But again, everyone there is a fucking asshole. So I don't ever want to go there again. 
Except maybe to explore the vault, because it's one of the only vaults in Fallout games that is like in pristine working condition, like nothing fucked up has happened to it, so it's really cool to explore it. Uh, besides that, all the other locations are really just kind of like, you know, meh. They're just meh. All, it's, it's the best way to describe them, just meh. Uh, besides that, all the other locations are really just kind of like, you know, meh. They're just meh. You know, you just gotta move on. You don't really care about them. No one, no one there is interesting anyways, you know. I know it sounds like I really hate this game, and I really don't want- I really did not want this video to turn into a rant, or to be me just bashing the fuck out of the game, but I knew I had to tell you guys my honest opinion about it. I really just did not like it as much as I thought I did. My first playthrough, I played years ago, I played the game, and I really did enjoy it, but this one was so much different. I guess- I guess it was really my fault, because I should not have played it right after Fallout 1, you know? I was already kind of burnt out, and this game was just like crawling through mud just to finish it, and I really wasn't having fun. And at the end of the day, we only play games to have fun, you know? So, me working to beat the game kind of ruined the experience for myself. So, as you're watching the video, just keep that in mind that my opinion is skewed by playing the game as work instead of enjoying a game, you know? There are things I did like about the game. I do love, of course it's Fallout. I love everything about Fallout. The setting, the history, the lore, the characters, the uh, the aesthetics. I just love everything about it. And this game was just a love letter for Fallout fans, of course, because it was one of the founders of the whole franchise. Yeah, it just really didn't hit as well as I thought it would. And I feel the game is very overhyped. It, it is a classic, but it's not as great as we imagine it to be. I think it's our nostalgia that makes these games look like hidden gems when at best they were just really just average. You know, that's beside the point. For me personally, I am glad that I played the game, but I fucking did not like it at all. I'm not, I'm probably never going to play it again in my entire life and that's okay. I'm going to move on to what newer games come out for Fallout. I'm pretty happy with Bethesda, what they're doing with the series and um... You know, I will always recommend these older games for Fallout fans, because you should at least experience them once in your life. Maybe you'll love them, maybe you'll hate them, but it, it's really up to you to play and decide at the end of the day, you know? So, that's all I wanted to say about Fallout 2. I appreciate you all for watching the video this long. Please, again, hit the like button if you liked it. Let me know your own thoughts. Did you like the game? Did you hate it? Let me know. You know, I, I love to hear from you guys. And uh, please subscribe to the channel so you can see all the new Fallout content I have coming up. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.